It's May 19th, 2014. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. The most widely disseminated possible consequence of global warming is a shift in the course of the Gulf Stream that triggers an ice age that sweeps suddenly across the northern hemisphere with catastrophic effects. Deep ocean currents of fresh water from glacial melt change the salinity and density of seawater in ways that affect the regional thermodynamic fluid flow. Thus, thermal transport currents like the Gulf Stream can change direction rapidly as the whole system moves from one equilibrium state to another. If you have ever seen the smoke streaming up from a cigarette and an ashtray suddenly change direction in a room where the air is very still, you have witnessed this effect in action. The mechanical analog is a long, slender object like a book standing momentarily on edge before a breeze tips it over. The equilibrium forces can be out of balance for an undetermined period of time before finally reaching the critical stage or tipping point where the object falls over. The concern of scientists about an imbalance comes from the fact that once the hammer falls, there is no way to stop it. Unfortunately for us, there is a wild card in this mix of thermodynamic fluid forces that we may have no control over. The Earth's magnetic field has weakened and changed polarity many times over the lifespan of our planet. It's called geomagnetic reversal. The shortest of these polarity flips is called an excursion and takes at the least 200 years and will remain flipped for at least 400 years. So it's not a sudden change that can happen any second. No, it's a meandering process that involves a slow movement and weakening of the poles. In fact, the process can take as long as 10,000 years and the polarity will remain in that state for as long as a million years. The last time the poles flipped was about 41,000 years ago during the last ice age. Interestingly, the farthest extent of glaciation during that period was 22,000 years ago, or about 19,000 years after this last geomagnetic polarity change. In spite of the fact that it is a polar solvent with a magnetic dipole, pure water is diamagnetic and dielectric. Throw in a few ions like sodium and chloride and it acts like a pretty good conductor. Whenever a conductor moves in a magnetic field, an electric field forms that produces a counter-magnetic field. This is called the Lorentz force. This force can act like a brake, slowing momentum or changing the direction of ocean currents. This statement seems like a no-brainer to some, but finding corroboration on the Internet could be difficult. In any case, it is an established fact that the Earth's magnetic field is weakening and shifting. At the very least, this shift may affect thermal mixing of the oceans. At the most, entire currents like the Gulf Stream may change course in unexpected ways with unexpected results. This video by Rafael Goltijo shows how thermal mixing of a ferromagnetic fluid is affected by a magnetic field. Clearly, the oceans are much larger, more complex, and not strictly speaking, composed of ferromagnetic material. However, this video makes the kind of fluid flow effects easier to see. Now, the Earth's magnetic field is small, between 30 microteslas at the equator and 60 microteslas at the poles. However, this is enough of a field to produce ion separation, electric currents, and therefore measurable opposing magnetic fields in the ocean currents. So it's not really much of a stretch to imagine that the momentum of these currents may also be affected. Not only that, but the atmosphere may also be directly affected in similar ways. The composition and phase of the atmosphere is largely different from the ocean, but similar effects of breaking and course deflection may be at play. First, consider that clouds contain ions produced from dissolved sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, sea salt, not to mention dissolved carbon dioxide and other stuff. So we should expect the same kinds of ion deflection and cloud movement as we see in ocean currents. This basically boils down to faster spinning and more quickly moving storm systems in the absence of a magnetic field. Hurricanes and tornadoes, for example, may become even more severe and less predictable. Second, diatomic oxygen is paramagnetic, meaning that it is slightly attracted to the poles of a magnet. This means that cold air currents flowing south will have more momentum and warm, lower-pressure, north-flowing air currents will have less momentum. Bear in mind that high-pressure and lower-altitude translates into higher percentage of oxygen 
and thus more magnetic force per unit volume than higher altitude and lower pressure air masses. Not only that, but the force acts in the same direction as the magnetic field lines, as opposed to the perpendicular force exerted on ocean currents and storm clouds. This dynamic would necessarily lead to heavier rain and snow because it would facilitate the transport of moisture. Frontal boundaries may also become more and more vertical and farther reaching. It is this far-reaching north-south moisture transport, I believe, that may be responsible for creating an ice age. John Holdren, science advisor to President Obama, has several videos on the Daily Conversation channel of YouTube that explains the consequences of global climate change. The polar vortex explained in two minutes shows how the polar vortex weakens and becomes more jagged with deeper excursions of cold air south and warm air north. This means that more extreme rain, snow, and drought events in the northern hemisphere. We can only imagine that the effect of a weaker magnetic field will only exacerbate the problem. The question is, will any of this lead to a new ice age? And is there a relationship between changes in the Earth's magnetic field and glacial periods? It may only be a coincidence that the last magnetic field flip occurred right in the middle of our last glacial period. Our climate is affected by a vast matrix of forces. It goes without saying that the big picture needs a lot of well-trained eyes to interpret it. Let's just hope that we have the will to turn that knowledge into action. My name is R. Crosby Lyles. Thanks for watching. News from the can. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Sources and links are in the description below.